Hey, what's up, everybody? Championship Leadership Podcast. And today we got Sam Taggart. I'm actually in Salt Lake City. Usually uh, this is on Zoom video. And uh, he's the CEO of Door to Door Con and Door to Door Experts. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so I met Sam. He did your very first Door to Door Con. January 2017? 18, 19. Yeah, 18. So 18. like it was it was right at the beginning of 2018. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, <clears throat> my business partner, Satema Ali, was there. He was speaking. And so we were there. They brought, I remember Grant Cardone came in and like Vivint was doing a big thing. And it was like this, <laughs> yes, big, like what's going on? Trying Satema, to sabotage. Satema's like, let me speak at the same time. This is just Grant. And I'm like, okay, ballsy move. All right, I love let's it. go. I love it. Um, but yeah, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thanks no, for joining me. Thank you for being a supporter from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That was like the start of the journey. Yeah, it then. was impressive. Like, I mean, the room you were in, I'm sure it's grown in, you know, I know the speakers that you got coming in are, you got Tim Grover coming in this yeah. year, right? Who else is coming? Ed Milet, Tim Ed Grover, Milet, dude, you got Coach some. Burt, Mark Eaton. Awesome. We have, some, wow. we have some really cool speakers. That's really cool. And yeah, we, I was there for the first one and it was awesome. So, um, First question I always like to ask for Championship Leadership Podcast is, what does that mean to you when you hear that? Like championship leadership, what, what do you think of when you hear that? Just somebody that wins. Like, so I look at like team, right? So take like a Michael Jordan and a lot of people, obviously the Bulls coach, they look at it and they're like, wow, he was the coach, he was a leader. But I also look at like a Michael Jordan. It's like, he was a leader of that team. You know what I mean? And Tim Grover, yeah. obviously speaking at DoorDoorCon. Yeah. We jammed about this and it was interesting and in his book he talks about it but he's like a lot of people would recruit the bulls players and they'd be like hey we want to poach this guy because he's a champion you know he's won all these championships because he's been on michael jordan's team yeah. and michael jordan would go to them and be like you're way overpaying for that guy yeah and it's like why are you sabotaging this <laughs> yeah. dude's like salary yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> he's like i'm just trying to warn you like he won't perform like he will on my team on your team yeah. Because of my leadership, yeah. I elevated him and made him a much better player. And so I think of it like that. Like I think of it as somebody that has the ability to influence and create the greatness out of their yeah. team. Yeah, that's that's kind of it's really interesting. Number one, that he's he's going around and he's like telling other people that. But it's so true. Right? It's so I true. Was, I was literally watching. A, there was a Facebook video clip of Jordan and it was talking about exactly what you were just saying. Like they were getting battles and he like he hit. Steve Kerr in practice one day, but he was just like, he's, he's he wants mean. it he's to like, be I, I, the I, same I, as the intensity of like finals would be, right? Because that's where they're going to be every year. Yeah. In the finals. No, so I, I, you know, I look at it and a lot of people didn't like Jordan because of that, but it's like, do you want to win? Yeah, right. you know I mean? It's like, I win championships. Yeah. He was a guy that won championships. And no doubt. So I think that that's probably a good definition of, that's like the first thing that came to my mind, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What's uh tell, Tell us a little bit about yourself, like door to door con and door to door experts. Obviously, you didn't just wake up one day and be like, I'm going to put this convention on. What's the history for you inside of the door to door world? Like, I, I still remember, like, I knocked doors, right? Like, yeah. That was the thing. That was the theme. It was so awesome. Um, you definitely are passionate about it. Like, it's it's your life and what you do. Uh, yeah. A lot, tell us a story. A lot of people probably listening to this are like, really? Door to door? Like, what, why? Why that? <laughs> yeah. Like, that? you were crazy. Yeah. That's stupid. That's a terrible thing. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and really, that was a big catalyst of what created what I do now. Because um, since I was a little kid, so I was, you know, eight, nine years old selling magazines and I was 12, 13 selling painting curbs, like the address on the curbs all through high school. And I actually made good money. Um, graduate high school, the day after high school, I moved out to Texas, started selling alarms. And uh, then I did solar for a couple of years. And so all I did my whole life, I never have had a W-2, wow. I've never had an yeah. hourly, I've never had a normal job is what everybody says. And I think it, it helped me obviously become who I am today, but I, I always had the shame of you knock doors? Like, when are you gonna get a real job? Yeah, you know right. what I mean? And yeah. so I, I was always a top performer. <clears throat> made my first million at a very young age. And, you know, a lot of people think like door to door made your first million. Like that doesn't even correlate, right? Yeah. And they don't see it as like an opportunity like that. And I, 
And I was always like, wait, why don't more people do this? Like, why don't more people know about this? Yeah. Like, this is a... You're the crazy one. Yeah, yeah like, like you're the you crazy one. This? Why are you a teacher <laughs> yeah. making $40,000 a year? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. I, it, it, but yet, they look at me, the teacher is going to look at me and be like, you're an idiot. You're yeah. not doors for four months and Who make, do that? you know, right. multiple six figures? Like... <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you do the rest of the eight months? I yeah. don't know. Go to Bali and yeah. Thailand. Like, what do you do? The, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, so, and I'm not trying to say it to my horn. I'm just no, saying, absolutely. like, I, I felt like the stigma of there the industry yeah. was so backwards. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's why I have Inoc doors blasted on my truck. And yeah. I gave everybody I a it. shirt that says Inoc yeah. doors. It's just... Let's change that. Like, yeah. let's take some pride Impressive. in it. Like, I don't want a parent to look at their son when he's like, hey, I'm going to go do door to door sales. I don't want them to be like, no, you're going to get kidnapped. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. That's what like crappy, people, that's what drug addicts do. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, no. But anyway, so I, I uh, so long story short, you know, I was a top performer in my fields. And then I had this vision to really just unify up level bring some honor and integrity to the space so um we actually just founded the door-to-door -door association it's a nonprofit. And, oh wow uh we're doing some cool stuff we're doing a documentary next year and, really yeah so there's there's that's it, incredible it's man. got legs we've 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 yeah. kind of hit this momentum phase where it's like yeah this is a thing now yeah well you are definitely uh you know you talk about championship leadership like you're definitely a championship leader in this space in this industry leading from the front, just not talking about it. Like you, you've done it from such a very young age, like it, it, you embracing it and like changing the stigma, starting an association, starting the door to door con, like where does that come from? I think it's like, I spent a lot, that's actually a really good question. Cause I spent a lot of time like doing a lot of self reflection, meditation and um, trying to figure out like, what's my purpose. Everybody talks about like, what's your why? Yeah. Like what drives you? And I really identified like me speaking impact, like creating a difference in people training like that gave me so much energy. Like I love getting that DM on Instagram where it's like, dude, I love got that video. Sale. Like oh, okay. I yeah, got yeah. a sale because yeah. of this video or, you know, like that. Those types of messages just like fuel me. And I was like, how do I take that to like an extreme? Like, how do I like really make a difference like everybody's like oh I want to make a difference and you know it's not easy trying to go start this nonprofit and a documentary is not going to be cheap yeah and, right um you know I actually talk to James Lawrence the Iron Cowboy all yeah, the time yeah. he's like don't hire these video guys <laughs> don't spend this much money yeah it's just like, watch his, yeah. his documentary yeah so anyway so he's been coaching me <laughs> not what not what to, to do, do. Yeah, yeah perfect <laughs> um but long story short like for me, that what drives me is is really that impact. Like I want to look back in ten years and be like, dude, I made a dent. And the association is going to change licensing and city regulations. It's going to change certifications, just like how you were an insurance agent. Yeah. How you had to get your license, and yeah. there's regulations and a board of ethics. We're building that for the direct to home That's market, awesome. so to help you know, clean up some of the crap that, cause, cause yeah. yeah, there is a stigma for a reason. Like yeah, there's right. shady sales dudes out there and, but yeah. you're going to get that in a car lot or a realtor yeah. or a, I had a shady realtor oh, yeah. like that lied to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> what? Yeah. But they, but they don't, they don't blast realtors and be like, no, yeah, they're all shady. Sure. It's like, oh, he's a realtor, but it's like, they have a board of realtors. They have a code of ethics. They have a way of regulating it. So, um, direct to home doesn't have that. And our mission is to kind of create a way to, way to unify that and clean that up. So. Yeah. So are you still knocking doors? Yeah. Uh, not on a consistent basis, yeah. but one of still our staying sharp, still staying sharp. One of my, one of my core values is don't just talk to talk, but walk, walk the walk yeah, because I love that. you get a, you get a lot of people that want to get into the coaching or mentor business. And I, I have like a mastermind group. I coach CEOs and reps and things yeah. like that. And you know, for me, I wanted to keep fresh. I wanted to always be somebody that's like, Hey, you want to go knock right now? Let's yeah, go. Let's you know what it. I mean? Like, yeah. And so I'll go consult a lot of times. And you look at most consultants, teachers, it's like they teach because they can't. You know what I mean? Those that yeah, can't yeah, teach yeah. Right. and those that can't teach, teach PE. Yeah. <laughs> Come just, on, man. I got I'm a just, PE degree, I, bro. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just so true. But you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I got it. So I, I look at it and I go, you know, I never want to be the guy that's stuck in there like, hey, he just wanted to get off of the doors, so that's why he does what he does. Yeah. 
I'm like, no, 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 yeah. let's go. I will let's go do throw right down now. on you. Yeah. Let's do it right now. That's and awesome. I do that all the time with clients. That's so. great. I think that's, you know, again, when you talk about leadership, it's, it's, yeah, it's getting out of the office and being like, yeah, let's go do this. Like, you know, I think there's a natural progression to where, yeah, you probably don't stay in the trenches the whole time. You can't, not if you're gonna lead, create the vision, go out and do some of the big things that you're doing as far as like really trying to turn things around in this industry. Um, you can't be knocking doors all the time. Like, yeah, and, and I think, but I think that there's a, there is a deficit of people that are willing to lead from the front. So like yeah. one of those championship leadership traits that I think are so important to embody would be willing to go out and lead from the front. Yeah. Cause I think so often leaders feel like they can lead from behind and in the office and be like, you guys yeah. go out and slay it. Like yeah. even I have an internal sales team, right? Yeah. And like yesterday I'm texting them like, Hey, how many you at? I'm at two. Yeah. Oh, that's like, cool. and I'm still doing videos like, and podcasts. Oh, he's doing it? Like, like I was oh, filming all day yesterday, but in between shoots, I was like, I know I need to make a couple of sales calls just to like prove it to my guys. that I'm still hustling. And they know that like, that's incredible. I'm still yeah. working with clients right now. So like yeah. in the meantime, I'm still trying to like prove to them because if I'm selling, they're going to be selling. And I've, I've always had this mindset of this lead from the front. And I think that a lot of leaders forget that principle. Yeah, totally. So where, yeah, where does that come from? Like, are there some people that have like really directly impacted you as leaders, coaches, mentors that, that you've learned from? Like, yeah, who did you learn from? Who, who, who taught you the ropes or who has guided you, impacted you? And maybe more so than that, like, what have you taken from them? Like, yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, first one that comes to my mind is uh, the same mentor that mentored Satema is Men Jeff Mendez. Okay. And you know, Satema worked with me at yeah, Vivint, yeah. and we we're in the same kind of region. And our regional was Jeff Mendez. Okay. And uh, he taught a lot of just how to manage a system, not the people. That was kind of always his mantra. And I'm very much so like don't think just do like yeah. I've always had this mindset of just like too many people are so hesitant to take action because they have paralyzation off yeah, of like totally. try to perfection and I just got to know the product inside and yeah, out before, before I, I sell on, it right? and yeah. I'm, I'm like yeah. I remember <laughs> I switched from alarms to solar and I didn't have a shirt, a badge, didn't know the website, <laughs> didn't even know how to sign anybody up. I wore a, an old Vivint shirt and I'm not selling Vivint. And they're like, are you a Vivint seller? I'm like, no. no. <laughs> What's your website? I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> and I sold a deal. Sold they're like, well, deal. how does it work? Like, what happens if it snows? And I was like, what happens if it snows? Then it snows, dude. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. That was my answer. I said, <laughs> then, it then it snows. Like, I mean, you go yeah. sledding, you yeah. go skiing. Like, what do you do? I don't know. You maybe do put what some, you do in snow. Yeah, oh, make yeah. sure you have four wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, no, but, I, but if I get solar and it snows, I was like, then it snows yeah. and you have solar. Yeah. And they're yeah, like, you're cool. not in. I was like, Honestly, man, we just need to do this and then do it. <laughs> and I didn't know it was just my way of BSing around yeah. the answer. But yeah. like, it was just so funny because I was like, I need to know what I need to you know. Yeah. But I walked Prime out of an example of but like I, just going out and doing it. But right? I walked out of a deal. And that was one trait that I've always had. But what coupled that, the balance side was Mendez is always about, hey, put a system in place because my method is going to get exhausting over time, I'm always gonna be messing up. I'm not gonna look professional. It's not gonna be very, there's not gonna be a lot of longevity to it. Where putting my method of just go with systems of saying, let's implement, let's implement, let's implement, yeah. has created a, a, a faster accelerated result in my leadership career. So yeah. I think that was, Mendez came to my mind and Nick Hansen, who I co-managed with, um, and then a guy named Brian Jackson and Kelly Walker, they were my, CEO and president in the solar company I worked with. Um, those guys are awesome. Kelly Walker had started, I mean, he, he sold a company for 200 something million. And wow. like he, just the guy that wears the Walmart jeans and you'd yeah. never know. Yeah. And he yeah. drives the freaking 200 or That's 2002 nice. Bronco. And you're like, <laughs> You sold it. You, you you worked for Golden Gate and managed billions of dollars <laughs> of capital. Yeah. He's just that guy. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? And yeah. I just loved how like savvy he was. And anyway, so those would be a couple that came awesome. to my mind. Yeah, thank you. What's um I think we've talked about it a little bit, but what's what's the vision for you? I I think of guys like you know, if I, I go to football, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban, they just they're winning championships all the time, right? 
and they make Sorry, it look, Nick. Yeah. I'm just yeah, saying. Well, not this year. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, Nick. <laughs> not no, um, the yeah. Utes, though. I'm rooting for the Utes. Oh, yeah, for they sure. are number five, yeah. and there's a high chance they make the playoffs. So I've already bought it. my Rose Bowl ticket. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. They might make the playoffs. Yeah. I can't go to the Rose Bowl. Already. What a waste of a flight. <laughs> so, anyway, not to get me started. No, you're good. Yeah. But keep going. But so, you know, the greats, the great coaches, they make it look easy, but they have this vision, right? They, they can see things that others don't. And not, not just that, but they're willing to have the courage to take, make the decisions and actually uh, implement on that vision. So what's, what's a big vision for you here in what you're doing and where you want to go yeah, next um, five years? That's a great question. So there's kind of two different companies, the nonprofit, and then we'll call it D2D. Yeah. Um, and there's some overlap. But one's for profit for sure, and yeah, yeah, totally. um, and the for profit one, you know, it's kind of a, a coaching and consulting firm that will expand outside of just D to D. Okay, I think everybody knocks doors. You yeah. know, like whether they like to say it or not, oh, or take great, on that right? ma mantra. I'm mm -hmm. like, you did insurance. Did you knock doors? I did knock doors. Yeah. See what I mean? And I've called people on the phone book, which is kind of like knocking doors. That's right? knocking doors, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I think in any any life you knock doors like if you any like what I, my my thing is achievement lies behind the door and i'm writing a book um so kind of in that five-year vision so i've yeah. been formulating this formula we call the achievement formula okay and it's all about kind of like what's the formula to to really get what you want but the principle is achievement lies behind the door and you have to knock a door to get it to open in order to actually achieve anything and so I, I look at life and I say, we're all knocking doors figuratively or literally um, and kind of branching out a little bit more into the sales general world and, and, and creating these experts and coaches and consultants. And, but then on the um, nonprofit side, that's, that's, cool. that's cool. My goal, my goal is to have 10,000 um, agents registered in five years okay. and have 300 companies as members that, core, that, that, that play together. I, yeah. I love the, the world of win-win. Yeah. I think our industry is very cutthroat. If yeah. you knew, if you know our industry, well, that's you know, what I remember from door to door. Yeah, you had like, a company. hey, we're all on the same team here, and then Vivian's and then Vivian like goes and throws it. Yeah, everything. like tries to set. Like it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm not no, even against them. Together. I'm not even competing <laughs> with them yet. They try to sabotage. Yeah, like right. that is so like our industry, and I'm like it, it was the it was literally the epitome of like what our industry is about and how polarity that was like the polar opposite of like. We're trying to only us. They literally had on the stage hashtag only Vivin. Yeah, like really? on a, on the stage, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. we're sitting there. What formulated through through our event? So while that Satem is talking, and yep. while that's all going on, social media, all the people that were for the mission and movement that I'm creating yeah. is hashtag only Unity started to socialize and started okay, trending okay. on social media. Oh, wow! And it was like. Oh, you just looked like idiots trying yeah. to be the only ones thinking yeah. there's thousands of companies out there, yet you think you're the only one that actually is good. I'm like, what if there's a world where there's a win-win? Yeah. What if there's a co like collaboration and collective like support to to yeah, be better? You know yeah, what I mean? Such, you know, it's such scarcity from such a like yeah. large prosperous company. You know, I mean, it's like. They don't really have any competitors. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm, such I'm a great sitting, job. Like, what are they worried I, about? I'm like, you're a multi-billion dollar company. <laughs> yeah. Like, leave me alone. You know what I mean? It's like lost opportunity to, to really shine. Really. Yeah, to participate. I, yeah. I invited them. Yeah. I, you know, you know, it's sad. And I mean, I don't I'm not trying to throw rocks. So no, I, for I mentioned sure. Jeff Mendez was like a big catalyst into like my mentorship. Yeah. That same week, he was the one that planned the event. Yeah. He was the one that planned Cardone. He yeah. calls me on Monday and said, hey, just so you know, I'm hosting an event down the hall and we're bringing Cardone. It's free. You should invite everybody to our event. Like, yeah. why, why, would I, why, why wouldn't you just bring him to our event and come speak and have him work with us? Like, yeah, right. I'm like, that would yeah. be the smart thing. And, and it was hard because, you know, I, I watch people's ego over time sometimes cloud their judgment and get in their way. And I'm not trying to throw rocks. I'm just trying to say, like, you know, currently he was let go from the event and there's been you know a series of events and it's like what i look at is i go well it's important to keep your cause and motive very win-win yeah. and very i'm trying to support and lead a tribe and be a steward over a tribe mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times when your own agenda gets very mixed into that it 
it sometimes like loses its authenticity and, and you lose some influence over the, the tribe that you're trying to lead. Yeah. Which I think is an interesting thing in and of itself. Yeah, it is. It is. It's important. Like, you know, that's been something that's been present for me recently is like just believing the best in others and just questioning my motives first, right? Like, yeah. if, all right, why, why do I want to say this? Why do I want to make this post? Like, why am I doing this or that? Because I think it's often flipped for most people. Like, they question others' motives and they believe the best in themselves and not others, right? And, yeah. And so powerful there. But um, maybe you could talk to us about, like, we all have turning points or critical moments in our life where you kind of get to that why in the road. And I think a lot of times it could be easy maybe to go left where everybody else is going, but to go right and to go down that road less traveled. What clearly has you where you are today, but had you maybe not made that decision and went a different path, you could be somewhere very different. Is there something that really sticks out yes. to you? Yeah. And it's like really resonating right now, actually. So Thanksgiving, I had an old friend that recruited me to a company called Clear, and I was at a solar company called Clear. They ended up losing me hundreds of thousands of dollars. I sued them. Um, oh, wow. It didn't go well. They didn't pay. Like mm -hmm. it, it was just, a, it was a bad debacle. And this guy that recruited me there, um, he was just a rep, you know, he ended up working under me. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't like, he came over on Thanksgiving to play spike ball. And I hadn't seen him in, since like this the clear. Yeah, like just okay. a couple just, of days yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was so fun because he wasn't even part of that. Like it wasn't his yeah. fault. It right. wasn't like he, he had no involvement in that. He just happened to introduce me to the company. Yeah. Um, and we were reminiscing and I said, that was the biggest blessing that ever happened to me. And I was like, I'm thankful for that because it's on Thanksgiving, right? And he's like, wow, this is like almost like purifying because I felt super guilty that all went down and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and I was like, no, dude, like had that not happened, I wouldn't be here. Like I wouldn't be doing DVD. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing yeah. DVDCon. Like I, that was a big catalyst to like, you know, go to Solstice and then do that for a couple of years. But like had a, ha that series of events not happened, I wouldn't be here. And then the next one that came to my mind is and so, so the principle on that is like sometimes your biggest trials and, and moments of like, dude, I want to jump off a cliff like this yeah, sucks. Right. Like, yeah. you know, and somebody takes hundreds of thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars from Hard you. Hard to see it then, right? Yeah, you're you sitting there like wanting like, to rip man. heads off. And yeah. yeah, so now I'm like, dude, what a blessing. But then the other piece was when I had to leave Solstice, that was one of the hardest things. On the VP of sales, I worked two years to put a foundation in place. I built a program from the ground up and it was right when it was finally like cooking with gas, right? I'm like, yeah. oh, it's like, it's on its thing. It's yeah, moving, yeah. we're getting somewhere. I get this vision to say, hey, let's do this event and this movement <laughs> and this and that. And I was like, oh, I'll just do both. Yeah. Well, there was a point in time where everybody's like, oh, this is a great Solstice recruiting event. Remember the cutthroatness of our, yeah, yeah, of yeah. our industry? Yeah. They're like, Sam is just gonna host this neutral event and then <laughs> recruit all of our people. Yeah. Like, what a ploy. And so yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't get this buy-in and I'm like, yeah. what the freak? Like, so I had to, it was a critical crossroads where I yeah. could have taken wow. the easy route and been like, well, obviously I'm making killer money here, like yeah. killer money. And I've got to leave for a non-profitable event and a podcast. And yeah. I remember Kelly, the owner, he's like, you're, wait, you're quitting? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, He's yeah. like, you're picking that road, a podcast? How are you going to go make money with a yeah. podcast? He laughs and he says, see you in two months. <laughs> He's like, your job will be there. Oh, wow. See you in two months. Yeah. And that's what he said to me. Yeah, that's what he said. Wow. And it wasn't like out of rudeness. No. It wasn't yeah. out. He was just like, think this through, Sam. You're making yeah. killer money. <laughs> yeah. Your event is going to lose you money. Yeah. Then what? Then what's, yeah. what's after the event? And I was like, oh, no, man. I just <laughs> yeah. had this mission dude and he's like to why like what does that serve he's i was like it serves the better man it serves the industry and he's like yeah but how are you going to pay for your mortgage that you're you know i just closed on a on a lot oh, to wow. build my dream home yeah. <laughs> i'm not even kidding like literally i'm like hey i quit a week after i bought What'd you know an acre say, lot way? my wife she is a champion that, no she's like i believe in you i believe yeah. in you nor does she even know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's kind of one of those things, it's like what she doesn't know doesn't yeah, hurt her yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. I'm like, we'll be all right. Like, yeah, no, and <laughs> Trust me, I'm man. sitting there tripping. I didn't take a paycheck for like a year. I was like, oh, I had to go get a loan from. And you don't just start a podcast and like 
You don't. Nicola, I didn't make any money you, still you know, from yeah, the podcast. No, like, I'm like, I still haven't made money from now, the event. Yeah, it's like, I, yeah, the event has made me no money still, and the podcast has made me no money still. So he was very he right. Was right. He was very right. So, so luckily, other opportunities came yeah, because. Yeah. If you're listening to this, yeah. don't think your income is going to come from starting a podcast <laughs> yeah. and starting an event. That's so true. And yeah. I'm like, oh, he was right. But I was so committed to the mission. And this is yeah. the principle right. of like championship leadership. It's I was so committed to the mission of yeah. unifying, up leveling. I mean, that really just like it just rang so true. I didn't even, you know, first time I'd ever met you was the night before at the dinner. And uh, yeah, you could just like the passion for what you were doing, the belief in what you were doing just like came out like it just filled the room like it really did. And that's what I remember. And so, yeah, I mean, definitely from a guy that re you really didn't even know until you came in this morning. Like, I do remember that. And so that's why it's fun to continue to follow you and people like that. Thank you. Yeah. So one last question before we wrap this up. And thank you for sharing those. I think those are huge because we all have failures, right? But sometimes we feel like, man, it feels lonely. Like you're the only one that's going through this. But the reality is, is when you hear people like yourself that have some success, man, Dude, they've, been, it, they've been through the fire too. Oh, it's almost every sucked. time. When you're, Many sitting, times, when you're right? sitting there going, do I have to sell my dream home that I haven't even built, that I've yeah. already signed on a builder and I'm going to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> yeah. again and then I have no income. And then it's like, oh, this is, this is, those are, those are, but it, but, but you also knew like you can always go back to the doors. Yeah, and do that, that right. was where and but that's what drove me. Actually, I was like, I'm not going to go back to because that was always an easy plan B. Yeah, I can yeah. always go throw in a couple of deals and make money. Yeah. And I had to like shelve that or else I wouldn't have stayed doing what I'm doing. It would right. have been easy to get sucked back into easy money. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes we forfeit our dream because for we want to get easy road, for right? the easy road. Of yeah. You know, I know this. It's comfortable. I'm going this route. Yep. But another piece on that is just like. The sacrifice, I think a lot of people negate, like, you know, literally having to go to my father-in-law and saying, I need money. Like, that's embarrassing yeah. when you're going from like, I'm building my dream home. Yeah. He's like, you're building yeah. a million dollar a home second, and you're asking me for money. Say, maybe you should rethink yourself. And I said, no, dude, I'll figure it out. Like, yeah. I'll, I commit. Like, yeah. And he trusted me, he gave me like 30 grand or whatever, just to get me through like this little lump. And yeah. and it was, it, I think a lot of people don't see that side. And, and I think that, you know, when you say this crossroad is they're not willing to suffer. Like I think a year, year and a half of just no money. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking no money. Yeah. And it wasn't easy. But yeah. but what, what was interesting is because my mission and cause was so pure and such a good motive and it was so like deep. Yeah. It wasn't a lull. It wasn't depressing. It wasn't like I hated life. Yeah. It was energizing every day. Yeah. Just the income wasn't there, yeah. but I didn't care because it was so energizing every right, day. Right, like yeah. it was like, this is way too yeah, important. Absolutely. I love it. So um, what are one or two things that you could leave with the listeners that could just help them like maybe some guiding principles that you live by or just some pieces of advice that they could actually take and implement today to help move them forward? I think so many people think it needs to be perfect or they, they they think that they have their perception of what success road or their vision should play out like i did yeah. oh i'll make money on a podcast and event still yeah, yet right. i've made money on a podcast <laughs> in my vision right someday um yeah. i knew my mission but the avenue and the way that that was all going to happen i had not mapped out yeah or it didn't play like i had mapped out in my right. mind so i think being flexible and and not being so attached to the perfect path mm -hmm but being attached to the mission and, yeah. and, and taking action without having to be attached to this perfection. Yeah. And then the second one would be um, plan. I wrote a planner called the DDD planner and it has changed, you know, I, I've, I've used more than sold. <laughs> so, I also um, have a planner that yes, I've used more than sold. I, I have created it, I sell them, I and I've it. gone through my own more than I've sold. Um, no, so it's funny though, I use it every day. Like yeah. I carry it everywhere I go, it is very custom, and it, 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 it is so perfect because like for me, I have my weekly planning session, it's like non-negotiable, yeah. this is my flow. I have my dailies, I have my, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that so often people don't stop for a minute and plan. Yeah. 
Mm. They just go. So like you take this whole, just go, but put a plan together and, yeah. and have scheduled time to where it's like non-negotiable. Here's my flow of planning. I literally have made a checklist to say, I've planned this and I've planned for this and I've planned these goals and I've went through my finance and I went through, like I have this whole outline yeah. and I just go through that and it helps alleviate the anxiety, puts some, some like foundational things I know I need to get done. And uh, it's helped me move some of these bigger passion projects forward a lot faster. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. What, uh, what are a few ways that we can find more about you, like the books, the planners, the, uh, the door to door con, whatever so our, you got going our, on? Yeah, um, our main website is the D to D experts.com. Okay. And then D to D con is the conference we do once a year. Yep. Um, I have a YouTube channel, D to D experts, uh, Instagram, D to D experts, or the Sam Taggart. Um, and the Sam Taggart.com is my personal website or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can follow me on Facebook or LinkedIn. My podcast is D2D Podcast. Um, awesome. So if you listen to podcasts or want to check that out. Um, yeah, so that would be just a couple nuggets. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll get those linked up. And uh, I just appreciate you taking some time to drive down here. And uh, I literally be on live. The podcast, man. 20 seconds. Really? Away. No, not even kidding. Oh, wow. So your, my drive was, I left at <laughs> nine and got here at 9.03. So anyway, don't Perfect. feel like it was a big Perfect. burden. I was like, oh, he's yeah, like, oh, I, yeah I can there. make that. When I texted you, he's like, hey, do you want to do your, your, your studio or, or this one? I was like, I can come to that one. <laughs> Should I ride my bike or drive? Like, I, <laughs> I love it, that man. was the question. <laughs> yeah. well, I appreciate it. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.